Now that we've shown you the Welcome app in action, what we'd like to do is build this app from scratch. However, when you're working in a workspace within Eclipse, you can only have one app by a given name. So as we get ready to build this new app, we have a couple of options here. One is to create the new version of this app using a different name from Welcome. And the other is to remove the existing project from our workspace. And you can do that very simply by just clicking the folder for the app and hitting the delete key on your keyboard, which I'm going to do now. And that's going to give you this delete resources dialog. If you simply click OK, it will remove the project from the workspace, but it will leave all of the original source code from that app on disk. If you also wanted to delete that source code, you could check this checkbox, which would also remove all the subfolders for that project wherever they happen to be stored on your hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, keeping the original project contents in case I need them for a later time. And now, of course, you can see the Package Explorer is empty. Now, to create a new project, we're going to go to the File menu, select New and Other. And you'll notice there's an Android category here, which I had expanded previously, which is why you see the options displayed on the screen. Uh, in your case, it may come up looking like this with the Android node closed, and you can just click the arrow to expand it. Now, we'd like to create an Android project, so we select that option and click Next, at which point we're presented with the new Android project dialog. Within this, we can specify the name of our project. Again, we chose Welcome. You can choose whatever you like. Uh, we're going to create a new project in the workspace, but we could, if we wanted to, create a project from existing source code if we have code to build from. We're going to store the project's folder and subfolders and code in the default location, which is my workspace folder. Uh, the welcome subdirectory will be created automatically based on the project name. If I don't want to use the default location, I can uncheck this and use the browse capability to specify where the welcome folder should be placed. Now, the next thing we want to do is choose our build target. And for our purposes, we are going to choose Android 2.3.3 here. Uh, we're generally going to try to target the most recent platforms in this video product and also in our corresponding book, Android for Programmers. However, when you're building real apps, you generally want to target the lowest possible platform so that your app can run on the widest possible array of devices. Now, uh, in this case, we're targeting Android 2.3.3, but the features we use in this app for displaying text and a couple of images on the screen are widely available in every version of Android. So if we had installed earlier target platforms going all the way back to Android 1.5 or 6, we could have uh, selected that as our target. Now, another thing that you sometimes will want to do when you're developing Android apps is take advantage of various platform features that are only available on certain devices and require a more recent version of the API or the platform. So, for example, if I had a feature in this app that was specific to Android 2.3.3, but, and I wanted to use that if it's available, I select that as my target platform. But let's say I also want this app to run on earlier platform devices that might not have that feature. I can then specify a lower minimum SDK version down here. So right now we're targeting SDK version 10. If I wanted, for example, to make this app available not only to Android 2.3.3 devices, but also earlier devices, I could put a min SDK version here that's lower. So for example, if I want all 2.2 devices and higher to be able to run this app, I can use the API level 8 for the min SDK version. And if I do that, now when I run this app, or when I put this app into the app uh, market, I can actually target Android 2.2 and higher devices. However, on the devices for the lower API versions, certain features may not be available to me in my app. And there are ways when you code an app that you can dynamically discover whether the app is running on a device that supports a particular feature. And then you can have uh, logic code in your app that would only use the feature if it's available. So it is relatively common to target a specific platform, a higher numbered platform, but make your app um, 
run on lower versions of the platform as well so that you can take advantage of certain features if they happen to be available. So uh, the next thing we're going to do down here is specify our app name. We're going to choose welcome in this case. You have to give your app a package name and for this they recommend using standard Java package naming conventions. Uh, so for example I'm going to say com.ditel.welcome and in standard Java when you begin creating a package name you're supposed to take your domain name and reverse its components so in our case our domain name is ditel.com therefore I started with com.ditel and whatever you put after that is up to you now one requirement for Android is that the package name must contain at least two components separated by a dot. So I have to at least say something like com.ditel. Everything I do after that is completely up to me. But the key is that this name needs to uniquely identify your app. And one of the reasons for it is that name is used in places like the Android market so that your app can be distinguished from other apps as well. So I chose com.ditel.welcome for this package name. And then finally we need to create the name of our activity. An activity is basically a screen within an app and there is a class associated with each activity and here what we're really doing is naming that class. Now I chose in this example to call it welcome but there's no requirement that the primary activity for your uh, app have the same name as the app itself. So we called it welcome and now when I click finish it's going to go create the project and if I expand the projects node here, you can see that we get a number of different so, um, subfolders and files associated with the app. The source folder is going to store all of the source code, the Java source code um, for your app that you create. And as you can see here, it created a package node that contains a welcome.java source code file. And if I open that up, you can see the class name that I chose for my activity, which is extending the base class or super class activity from the android.app package. So this code was all auto-generated for me. Notice it's also placed into the specific package name that I chose. Now in this app, we're not going to do anything with this Java source code file, so I'm going to close it for now, and we'll talk more about the activity classes starting with the next lesson. We also have this gen folder, and this is going to be where auto-generated Java source code files get placed for things like the graphical user interface that we're going to create in this example. We have a node that represents the target uh, Android platform that we chose, and then we have a couple of other uh, folders that are used to store various assets and resources associated with your app. Uh, so, for example, you might have uh, videos or images uh, or, as we'll see in the res folder, layouts that represent various aspects of your app, and they will be placed into these different folders. And then finally, there's a few folders or files rather at the bottom of the list here, the key one being Android Manifest.xml, and basically this describes attributes of your app and can be used to do things like filter your app for the purpose of saying in the Android market this app requires certain features therefore if the device that's using the Android market doesn't have those features don't allow this app to be displayed in the Android market for that user so for example if I have an app that requires a device with a camera and the app can't be used without a camera, I can state that in my Android manifest file. And when my app gets published into the Android App Store or other app stores, they can use that information to filter out my app for devices that don't have cameras built into them. Other important information that you'll find in this file is stuff like which uh, activity in my app is the main activity that should be started when the app is first launched from scratch. And we'll talk about the Android manifest file in more detail as we need to customize it on our own in later apps uh, and later lessons in this video product. Now, uh, at this point, what we've done is 
created the project that's going to enable us to now build this welcome app. In the next video, we'll introduce you to the visual layout editor and start showing you how to create the visual appearance that includes the text and the two images that we showed you in the test drive.